<clears throat> so we put our um, wick burner assembly out and we have to remove the old wick obviously um, from this unit before we think about fitting our new wick so uh, to do that one lifts the top that's called the flame spreader that little bit there and then this bit slides round um, just kind of jiggle it around a bit it's it's like slips under some that's it it slips under some little notches and that just slides it turns and slides under them so when you remove that um, if you wind the wick up um, quite high I don't know whether you'll see this we're getting there with a little screwdriver um, there's some clips there uh, on the side there and if you just pop those out you hear that that one popped out and then theoretically you should be able to wind the wick winder out all the way up that should come out he says there it comes so there's, a, there's our wick winder now um, years ago when I first had these as I say I, I first had this series 22 heater in 1978 when you bought a new wick you were given a new wick carrier like that in the box and then I suppose Aladdin for, for um, the expense of it they stopped putting them in the box and you, you just had to use the same one um, but they don't last there, there are a series of little holes there that uh, the brass wheel on the on this knob of the wick winder engages to, to raise the wick if you're having trouble raising and lowering your wick you know I mean this one's gone rusty <coughs> uh, because I haven't used this heater for a couple of years now um, if you can and I, I uh, found a very old-fashioned hardware shop in Shrewsbury which I'll put the link down um, it was on a it, they had an eBay shop that's how I found it and they had actually got uh, new wick winders for this 203 burner which um, I've got somewhere and I'll put it down ah oh, here we are um, there we go um, there's a new wick winder when we come to fit the wick we shall be putting a new wick winder on this and um, it might be advisable you know if, if you don't know the heater and you bought it say cheaply on ebay it might be worth i think that was six pounds or thereabouts um it might be worth you know um sort of investing in a new wick for it and then basically it's just a question of of pulling the old pulling the old wick can you see that you just pull it you're not worrying about damaging it you might like to get gloves on this is dried out so it's just got no paraffin on it now but if it is wet with paraffin you know do it outside it or over a bowl with some gloves on and um, that's it that's the old wick removed and it's as simple as that what I like to do there again as this heater hasn't been used in a number of years I shall put all these parts the wick winder the top cover and the flame spreader I should put all of those in the bowl of nice soapy water and really clean them well one thing I forgot to say is when you remove this um, unit uh, from the heater do be careful because on the bottom round here there is a plastic washer um, and there again it's not a disaster if yours is missing but I would strongly recommend there again I'll put another link to a firm where you can buy these very cheaply I think they're only a couple of pounds I think well I think actually it's 175 I have invested in a new one because looking at this it's very worn it's very squashed in places if and you see that slips on there and goes back into the tank unit if you don't have that in place and it's not creating a good seal you can get a thin when when the wick is drawing and soaking paraffin up you can get a slight uh, line of paraffin working its way up here uh, I'm not going to say that's dangerous because I don't think it is but what it tends to do is these blue flame heaters run very clean they don't have a lot of smell with them that's what that's the beauty of them in my book why I why I rate them and have always liked them when it's running properly with a blue flame there shouldn't be a lot of smell no paraffin -y smells but if you haven't got that washer in place and you get some paraffin creep up 
um, here when the heater is running it obviously draws air in because this is all air intake these holes the warm paraffin tends to you know if it's up here it tends to draw in and it starts smelling of paraffin you know you walk in your greenhouse and hmm okay there's a real paraffinic sort of smell there and um, so it's worth checking that you've got your washer on or you invest in a new washer for the price of them if you're if you're if you're refurbing one of these and you bought one cheaply do check it and see it's in good condition it's not broken and um, this there again has it's got some rust on it from the tank it's very worn so i'll be putting a new one of those on so while i'm also doing the refurb on the heater or, or just really getting it back up and running basically um i don't know whether you can see that this this is a mica window um obviously which is very key, crucial to these heaters because you look through to set your height of your flame and see your flame is running perfectly blue uh, this piece of mica here there again i think it would be the original i don't think i've ever replaced this one in this heater because as i think i bought this heater in around about um the late 90s or around about 2000 off ebay um it was a new old stock it hadn't been used up until that point I bought it in the original box that it was sold in um, so it's well over 20 years old so I'm going to replace that and to do that basically you can see there's two, uh, two um, brass screws that are threaded for bolts the other side and you take that off and this plate comes off so we'll do that and I'll show you then um, as I replace the, the piece of mica so there's our new piece fitted I've, I've <laughs> I put my messy fingers all over it but we'll put it back into the uh, heater tube now and tighten it up and then hopefully be able to give it a little clean if not we'll find that when we light um, a heater that that will burn off obviously this this is um you know subject to intense heat I mean mica is amazing stuff um, I've just cut that with some scissors but it it is made uh, from stone would you believe um, incredible stuff so it's um, it's incredibly hard it won't burn um, and as I say that will more likely burn off my, my hand but uh, we will give it a wipe when we've got it in uh, against the um, heater tube there so dead easy just to push it in uh, not not a difficult job at all um, so there we go that's another job done uh, the new micro window is back in and I can at least now see through there better I mean they're never brilliant I mean don't don't think it's going to be you know it's not a hundred percent crystal clear as I say because it is basically a piece of very thick thin kind of um, stone this mica but you can now I can now see through beautifully I can see um, I don't think you know if I put the uh, if I put the lamp down there you might um see it's, it's not very good light in here but as I say you can see you can you can see you and, and I'll, obviously when i set the flame up and light this first time i'll show you anyway you can see much much better that is the best that's been for years and years so a very easy quick job if you want to um just improve your paraffin heater any blue flame heater normally has a micro window in there somewhere and they all fit a little bit differently as i say this just you just cut um, you buy a sheet of this there again this comes off eBay it's not very expensive I think it was three 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 pounds seventy five or thereabouts and then you just mark it round to your old sheet and cut it with scissors and it just fits in some little indentations either end and top and bottom and then you rebolt rebolt the window back in job done uh, right so we're now ready to fit our new wick to our uh, burner unit which has all been uh, washed out and cleaned there again nothing too excessive just making sure there were lots of um, little bits of old carbon that falls down there and there was dead spiders and spiders webs and you just want to yeah I think it's while you're doing this you just might as well make it as clean as you possibly can and I've got a lot little uh, kitchen scotch bright cloth on that and just sort of shined it up a little bit you there again you don't want any you know any bits of carbon or anything like that or any bits where it's slightly gone corroded you want clean as possible so we have our new wick um it's always you never really want to touch the top of the wick if at all possible i know that's difficult sometimes and 
very again to get the right wick on the Aladdin heaters it's, it's very easy you'll see on the wick winder hopefully you'll see that it does say 203 on there so what you want is a wick for a model 203 and this is a two inch so there we go it's a two inch wick so it's dead easy you know if you're a bit unsure check your wick winder and that will give you your wick number because I, I've made mistakes before there, there is an Aladdin two inch uh, wick which is a 202 which doesn't fit this style of um, burner assembly so I say it's a 203 uh, on this and then basically what one does it's, it's a little bit fiddly but the, you'll see some paper tabs uh, on the wick they actually slide down so there we go we've got our paper tabs started our paper tabs have come through the bottom like that and then it's just a gentle uh, question of pulling them down gently um, and seating them make sure the wick seats on the top there and like I said it's a bit fiddly and you just got to take your time and work that down now so there you can see hopefully I've um, worked the wick through and gently worked it down um, it's very dark in there I'm not sure how you'll see that but you've got to be careful when you get to this point um, this brass inner circle it can sometimes pull on this red outer load and, and ruckle up so you've just got to be very careful that you know you might even need a very thin little screwdriver and just make sure you keep the red um, like almost cloth material canvas cloth material you keep it behind the br brass ring you don't want it to get ruckled up on it um, so then we can take our um, wick carrier I don't know what I called this yesterday my apologies uh, in the other video um, that I was doing yesterday I probably called this all sorts of things this proper name is called the wick carrier and as I say I've invested in a new wick carrier because mine was very rusted very corroded it was years old and um, so then then we can the idea again that this is all I say it's all a bit fiddly but the idea of this is that that should slide gently down there and engage into our so it's just just you've got to take your time and um, and I cut all that jiggling out because it was taking me some time but hopefully you'll see that um, our wick winder as it just just clicks on you wind it down and gently as I say you've got to gently ease that inside round so you're not getting ruckled up on that red the brass ring is all clear as I say um, if you take a little screwdriver and just run it round um, without you know you won't do any damage there just gently run it round so you're free and it's not ruckling up this then clips into the side there it's on like little clips that just clip in and then hopefully your wick will wind down like that um, then you can sort the bottom bits out and pull that um, pull that so it's all you don't want it you want as much wick you can take the bits of paper off and make sure you've got nice broad um, areas to soak the paraffin up there and as I say that's the job done basically um, make sure the wick is winding very easily which it is it's going up and down there and um, I always then just put the flame spreader in to see where we are 
um, in respect. Um, yep, I mean, I think that's pretty good. I think when you light these, which should be in quite a low position, you should have about five holes in this. You can see this is all little holes in this. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six holes showing there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So we're about a okay there, I think. As I said, our wick is sitting nicely. I've, um, you know, so sort of like, if you just pull it down, um, you won't hurt it. And um, make sure as how the wick is sitting nice and even in there, which it is. Round, round the same line of holes. Round the, you know, you can count the holes down and check that you're all level round there. And that's basically uh, the wick fitted. Um, then obviously you've got the top, the top cover to slide on there, which just sits on. And as I say that, that clicks. You'll probably I've got the screwdriver down. That actually sort of fits. You've just got to get there. We go. It just clicks in, drops down, and slides under some little lugs and and kind of locks in. And there we go. And um, the wick is turning up and down, lovely. Oh, look at that! It's lovely, lovely. Um, it's years since. <laughs> it just shows you that wick wire. That um, very important. This bit. It might not look um, important, but as I say, if yours looks like, oh, dropped it on the floor now. If yours looks like that, and it's very corroded, and the this has got dropped it again. I'll leave it. This has got brass teeth. This. Um, uh, wick winder which actually engages into those holes those holes become very worn over time and um, but that that's lovely it's, it's years since I've had you know um, and say so the wick looks lovely and level all round I mean it's never gonna be it's you know um, as I said yesterday it's not the space shuttle it's a, it's a blue flame greenhouse heater you know it's all very basic stuff um, so that obviously can go back into our tank then. As you'll see, I've painted my tank uh, just to basically cover the rust up. I mean, it's um, I've got some, I had the paint, the paint hasn't cost me nothing. It is um, orange, as you can see. I bought some engine um, paint, high resist, it um, takes temperatures up to 190 degrees it was it's engine paint basically this is it's a metallic orange um, I bought it would you believe as a dark red and that when it came obviously somebody cocked up on it and it was a mistake and it was orange and they did kindly send me the right color and said I could keep the orange so I've had this a couple of years and it's been um, never you know apart from look at it the first time I've made sure the tin was back the lid was back on well and so I've used that up on this it, it's fine it's not really the same as the the heater orange but it's a good um, like very hard wearing enamel type paint uh, it's a bit like hammerite basically that would be ideal as well um you know i'm not going to sell a heater it's you know it, i'm going to use it until it but virtually breaks and i can't repair it anymore so i'm not worried about that that quite isn't the same color orange as the rest of the heater it looks far better and it will keep the rust and hopefully keep the tank a bit more protected obviously in a greenhouse i've said it's a it's a very harsh environment it's warm it gets the sun on it in the summer, it gets very cold in the winter, you water, you splash water about, you know, you've got compost. Um, so that's fine, I'm really pleased with that. It's just a question now, we'll put the um, rest of the heater back on. Um, to hold to hold that, um, obviously as I've said before, you know, these hook over and then that drops down. And um, there again, it's just a question of jiggling those to get your burner locked into the tank. Uh, I am waiting on that new ceiling washer. I'm going to put a new big, pla that, that mine is very worn, this plastic washer. So hopefully I've got one coming tomorrow. Um, and um, then it's basically a question of filling it up with some paraffin and firing it up. Um, so I'm really pleased with my new micro window that I've also fitted, which looks so much better and that I can see through. And um, so there we go. Um, we'll come back when it's all back together and um, ready for some action.